so hi guys what's up everyone welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl aska akinya very warm welcome to this channel guys if you're new karibu tena sana if you're coming back again thank you so much for coming back again we are back again with another video it's a sit down video it is not our normal video yeah it's a sit down video and guys the last sit down video that i did it was about yeah, it was about something to do with the mistakes women do. I wanted that video to reach a thousand views. Yeah, so that I can I can post the second episode of it. The second episode of it actually I wanted to I wanted to say how now if you found yourself in that cocoon, yeah, where you are as a woman, where you are the provider, how you can get out of it. So we have reached a thousand subscribe a, a thousand a thousand views and guys we are at four thousand plus subscribers thank you so much i can't thank you enough those are four thousand plus people who believe in me who love my content who still want to hear more about my content yes i always do home making videos lifestyle and also talks so today guys we are on talks I'm not going to do a second episode of that. Allow me. I'm really, really sorry. But I want to talk about something different. Yeah. Still concerning mothers. Still concerning wives. I want to talk about something different. And this thing that I want to talk about. It is sensitive. It is kind of spiritual. And it is what so many people go through. Hmm. The reason as to why I have decided to talk about this is about what is happening in Kenya. And some few days back, I was just, I was praying. I was just praying. And I was praying about something and God showed me something else. God showed me that if my people can get so fed up if my people can get so fed up with their situation like what is that situation that you're so fed up with i'm giving you an example with whatever happened to kenya like things have been happening to this nation and people have just been quiet or maybe people have just been talking about it a few but those bills are just passed like the the, the finance bill thing yeah like it just didn't start like things have been happening and those bills were just passed so it reached a point where people were like no no mama go 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 thank you so it reached a time where people were like enough is enough we are sick and tired if the people we expected them to fight for us are not fighting for us we are gonna come out and fight for our future and what happened i don't want to misquote the president but if you're sensitive enough you'll realize that humility took course the president decided to humble when somebody accepts to come down and now figure out things. That is humility at its core. Humility happened and the president decided to drop the finance bill. And also, he decided to restructure some of the things that the people wanted to be restructured. Why am I saying that? God was reminding me of this story about Kenya and God was like, if the president of this nation Nifungeyo mlango mama and God was like, if the president of this nation can sit down can listen after people came out it was a sacrifice people died in it if this is the president, someone who is physical, a human being, as wicked as a human being is, can listen to your cries and come down and try to figure out with you and help you. What more can I, God, do? What more can I, God, do? And that is where my conversation is going to start. 
I'm looking for mothers who are tired. I'm looking for mothers who are tired with their situation. Mothers who are tired with the conditions of their children. Mothers who are tired and don't want to see repetitions of evil patterns over their children. To come out in prayer. To come out in prayer. Genuinely, people who are tired. I'm not talking about people who are not tired. Genuinely, people who are tired to come out and cry for God. Are you tired about that situation? Are you tired about what is happening to your children? Are you tired about the patterns you're seeing in your family? Like your family, maybe the joblessness that is going on in your family. Like there's that thing that is happening in the cycle of your family. God is looking for those people who are tired with that thing. I know this is a completely different topic in my channel. And I know people will wonder what is this. But... I heard it so clearly. God is looking for people who are tired with their situation. Mothers. There is that pattern where your child can just be sick. There is that pattern where your child is being attacked. There is that pattern where your children are struggling, maybe in marriages. There is that pattern that keeps on repeating itself in your family. That is the people that I'm looking for. God is telling you to get tired about that situation. Don't just fold the hands and be like, let, let it just pass. It is, it is not normal. If something in Akufinya, it is not normal. I'm going to give you an example with pregnant women. You know, when a woman is pregnant. Nifungia im lango pal. Sorry about that. So I want to give you an example with a pregnant woman. You know when you're pregnant and the, it is that moment where your baby wants to come out, you experience labor. You can try and call someone and be like, you know, I'm in labor pain. I don't know what. Bring me this. I'm in the hospital. Believe me, you are not in labor pain. When you are in labor pain, my first baby I experienced, I, I delivered normal. So I know what I'm talking about. When you're in labor pain, trust you me, no one, you, you will not even speak to no one. You will, you, you, you. You will not even have that energy. You will save yourself. You will push your baby. When it is time for delivery, trust you me, you will deliver even without who. You're seated down. Yes, you're having pains. You're seeing things that are not good in your families. But you're still not, you still have labor, but it is not that time that you cannot even speak. You're still not tired. Can mothers who are tired with the situation and conditions of their children come out? of your comfort zone pray god is going to listen to you if the president of this nation had to listen god is going to listen to you you know many a times let me talk about wives married women Many a times, no married woman want to say that they are struggling in marriage. And we all know that marriage is a whole lot of struggle. And it's not about you. It's not about that husband. It's about the devil. And it's about the glory of God. 
when you enter marriage, there are two things that always battle. God to take the glory and Satan to take the glory of God down. Oh, well, let me just say Satan to take the glory. In marriage, you will not tell me that you, 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 you are okay, you guys are okay. Because one thing I want you guys to understand that you will never step into marriage with your own understanding. You're just an actor <laughs> in someone else's movie. There's an author of the movie you are acting. Why am I telling you this? I want to tell you this before I come to my point. God is looking for wives. God is looking for husbands. Who are tired to see their homes not being at peace. Who are tired to see evil, to see confusion in their marriages. God is looking for those tired husbands and tired wives. It doesn't matter what is happening in your marriage. It is not about you. It is not about you that you've done something wrong to your husband. It is not about your husband has done something wrong to you. It is not about their family members. I want you to take it in your mind that it is about God. In marriage, it is about God and it's about the devil. You're just an actor in someone else's script. Number one, we did not create marriage. No one created marriage. It was the idea of God. It is the first ministry that God created. Yes, marriage. So it is not your idea. It is just like there's an author. Someone has written its movie and is looking for actors to act his movie. This someone knows the, the, the missions, the goals, the agenda that he wanted this movie to look like. And what will be the benefits and what will be the teachings and the lessons and all that. So that is marriage. Number one thing, put that in your head, that marriage, it is not about you. Hello? Yes, it is not about you. It is not about your man. It is not about how loving and how sexy and how those things are. It is about God. At the end of the day, in your marriage, God has to take the glory. In your marriage, at the end of the day, Satan is fighting God's glory. Satan also wants to take the glory. When you will understand that, if you have problems in your marriage, you will come out confident and plead for mercy. Let mercy speak. It is not about you. It is not about your husband. It is not about where you guys met. It is not about where you guys are. It is about God. So when I say many a times women, married women or married men, especially married women will hide and be like everything is okay be like like it is not normal to break up it is not normal to feel hurt it is not normal to be heartbroken it is not normal to have confusion in your marriage it is very normal it is very normal it is not about you just have that idea that it is not about you it is about god it is about the devil so which side are you choosing? Are you choosing the side of God or are you choosing the side of the devil? It is you to decide who is taking glory in this your marriage. Who is taking glory? This is the only ministry that God created. He is the author. We are just actors. And that is why it is a blessing to have a to it is a, it, you 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 operating in a in a in a in a in a, in a grace that that 
to 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 be in marriage you know marriages zimechafuliwa whereby people don't even want to be in marriage and i can imagine how the devil is taking glory after glory after glory because people think it's about them no it is not it is not about you mm it is not about it is not about how good you are in bed it is not about how caring you are. it is it is not about you mm. i think let me start with there it is not about you so if you have any difficulty in marriage and you are tired come out when I say come out, don't shout, don't tell people. Come out in prayer. Come out. Come out. Locate somewhere where no one is going to gossip about you. Just go in a forest. Just go, just get tired. You know, I'm talking to people who are tired. Not those ones who are not tired. I'm addressing people who are tired and they don't know what to do. And I'm here to tell you. Go somewhere, allocate maybe any for any quiet place. Go and pour yourself. Go and pour yourself. I know maybe you've gone through a lot. I know maybe you feel like your heart is so heavy and burdened. Just your tears. And God is going to translate every tear into prayer. Because I understand there are those times you can be so tired. There are those times you can be so silent that only your tears can pray. Imagine God is going to listen if you're tired. God is looking for a woman, a married woman who is tired. To see heartbreak, to see confusion, to see adultery, to see all forms of confusions that it's marriage. And when you're the side of God, who can stand against you? No one. Stand with God. Understand that it's not about you, it is about God. No matter how painful your marriage can be. No matter how painful you're going through, have an understanding that it is not about you, it is about God. You know, let me give you an example. When Jesus was coming on this earth, let me give you a revelation about Jesus. Jesus went through a lot. If you read your Bible, if you see the Jesus movies, I don't know. I was not there. Jesus went through a lot. And... Jesus understood that it was not about him. It was about he who sent him. Jesus understood it was about God. It was painful, yes. But the altar, the person who sent him knew why he was sending him. There was something he wanted to achieve at the end of it. And the person who sent him knew that there is someone who is fighting it. And so it is not going to be easy with you where I'm sending you. Because Nivita, Nivita, he knew that where I'm sending you, it is not going to be easy. But I will be with you. I'll give you grace. And may the grace of the world... Jesus carry grace. I will give you that grace to endure. At the end of the day, Jesus turned out to be victorious because he sacrificed. Because if, if, if Jesus was us, let me give you an example. If Jesus was us, because you will run as, as fast as your feeble legs could carry you. If Jesus was us, 
God akuna akuna God ange accomplish kitu walikuwa anataka ku accomplish and you see at the end of it all also Jesus got the victory There was a reward that Jesus was rewarded that whoever wants to enter has to pass through him because ali conquer that thing why am i telling you this i know you are going to go through a lot but when you understand it is about god you did not like people think that you've just found yourself in this marriage thing and so it has to work and it is a battle ground you think satan is going to fold his hands and watch you enjoy this ministry called marriage it is not about people it is not about subject kuna side chick it is not about in laws it is not about your side of the story it is not about friends it is about satan it is about god have that in your mind you will know the battles you will fight the word of god tells that that we fight not flesh but the principalities of darkness because god understood very well that the principalities we can spend all our time to fight the flesh but that is not the agenda we are here to fight the principalities of darkness which is the devil and when you have that understanding that i'm not just fighting this side chick you will be busy fighting the side chick you will be busy fighting your in-laws you will be busy fighting your friends and i don't know who but you're fighting flesh the person you are supposed to fight is the principalities of darkness remember if your marriage goes down satan has glory in it and god is ashamed about it yes i know sometimes it can be so hard that you say ah ah let the devil take glory many a times we struggle for lack of knowledge any time you will handle marriage with your own understanding outaweza we all know that when it comes to satan and us without god satan is going to win because satan is a spiritual thing outaweza but when you involve god you are going to defeat the devil because god is omnipotent and he will be omnipotent so if you are a woman i'm talking about women <laughs> you know when a woman cries even has to listen <laughs> i'm talking to women and i'm also talking to men but i'm addressing women if you are tired to see whatever is happening in your home cry to god tell god to stop whatever you're seeing there's a topic i'll talk about that is so deep that is making marriages not work you can be a woman and maybe in one way or another there was infidelity in between in one way or another there is something in between that is that energy that covenant of evil that you had done no matter the evil that is speaking against your marriage i'm here to tell you yes those things speak the energies of this earth will speak no matter how god decides to forgive you the energies of this earth will speak but god remains to be omnipotent the word of god tells us in philippians i don't know it is what verse but i know most of you know if my people who have chosen were amwe to leave the things the evil that they were doing and turn against the evil that they are doing and come to me i the lord will embrace them again i don't know what evil you did that is speaking negative over your marriage sometimes it can be not people it can be not the devil but you something within you that is speaking evil that want to pull your happiness down 
But if you pray with that verse, if my people whom I have called turn against their evil deeds and come to me, I the Lord. I don't know that verse vizuri, but I always love it. It is is it Philippians? Whoever knows it, and there's a decapuchini in the comment section. You see, in that verse, God is trying to say, God understand that maybe you were doing something uko evil, but now you are tired of those things. No matter how heavy that thing is, we all know that there is nothing bad in marriages like sexual wherevers. <laughs> That that shit is bad. <laughs> that shit. That shit is shitting. <laughs> One day I'll come and tell you some other things that I know about that shit shitting. No matter how heavy, no matter how bad it is, God is telling you if you turn against those things and come to me, you know that is humility at his cost. Kuji vunja vunja and just be God. I'm tired of this and i'm coming back please hug me embrace me i need your help help my marriage help my family help my husband if you are a husband i'm tired of this i need my home back in your order i'm here just embrace me God will see. God loves people humble. Humility at its core moves God. It moves God. But pride, God hates pride. Many a times, I can't do it without you. I know, we women, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm a culprit. <laughs> Guys, God is looking for that wife who is tired to see the husband misbehaving. God is looking for that wife who is tired to provide in her home. God is looking for that wife who is tired over insults of in-laws. God is looking for that wife who is Tired about whatever is happening. Who is tired to see the husband not moving? God is looking for that wife. And he said, if you come out energetic, angry about what the devil is doing in your family, I will listen. Satan will have no choice but to step down. Whatever you're, you're experiencing in your family, it is the hand of the devil. Whatever you're experiencing in your family, it is the hand of the devil. Fighting your happiness in your family. Because he doesn't want, he knows if things, if, 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 if marriage in Ezekiel are happy, the kids, the generation and everything will be okay. Do you know if you don't fight for the order of God, if you don't fight for God to take the glory in your marriage, you're destroying the life of your children and their generation forever. Because let me tell you, the kids are always the mirror of what is happening to the parents. Unezakwa, you don't want your children to live the life your father made you live. But you will find out that you're living. Your wife can see that you're living the life your father lived. You yourself, you will not even understand. You yourself, you will not even know. That you're making, you will feel like you're okay. But in one way or another, whatever happened in your generation, just immediately after your generation, is crying and be like, who the hell do you think you are to live an opposite good life that I did not live? 
We are talking about the spirits. You are a mother. Right now, you are... You're doing almost everything in your family. And you're not tired about it. You are transferring negative energy to your children. If you have girls, you're going through a lot in your marriage. No matter what happens, I, if you do not come out angry and pray and plead for mercy, your children are going to go through the same thing you went through. Because whatever you went through, it is you, you're just the physical, but the spiritual part of it is crying. It wants to. Yani, the generation. Oh, blood group. Oh, blood group. B, you, 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 you will take the looks of your mom. Like me, my daughter looks like me. Everything about my daughter looks like me. You know, the physical cause he has taken out of me. We forget that even things that happen in the spirit want to take, to copy whatever we went through. So I can imagine the things that I've gone through. If I don't get tired, I don't disconnect my children from it. It will be very painful to see my daughter going through the things I've gone through. I would want my daughter to experience goodness. But if I will remain silent and see that things are normal, the spiritual fights and battles that I've gone through will be transferred to my children. And the cycle will continue. And that is why I'm saying that God is looking for a tired mom. God is looking for a tired wife. You're tired about the confusion going on in your family. You are tired. Please, on your knees. Go somewhere. If you can meet even three or two people, cry for mercy. Do you know what mercy is? Mercy is... Something that bails you are supposed to be punished, but now you cannot be punished for the sins you committed. That is mercy. Mercy is speaking for you. Kabisa, kabisa, you have done something wrong that you are supposed to be punished, but you are not punished. Plead for mercy. Tell God to show you mercy in your family. In your, We have to plead for mercy. Cry out. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Let God show you. Any jitole, pour yourself. Just don't even go to a church where the congregation, what were major, and people will look at you and feel like, why are you praying more? Are you going through a lot? Of course, you're going through a lot. We are talking about those people who are going through a lot. You are tired in your family. You are siblings. Things are not working for you. Can you just come up and join hands and get angry and get mad over the devil? Sacrifice your time. Pray. Pray. Just pray. You're sick and tired of something happening to one of your siblings? I have seen prayers working for us as siblings. We were poor. We were broke. We never used to get jobs. I remember we used to have prayers like, oh God, God showed us mercy. We were living in a family. We are polygamous family. But let me talk about my mom. We were living in a family where we had eight kids. My mom has eight children. And I was the one who was rich with a salary of 17200 And everyone was looking at me. And everyone was living with me. And I had to go through a lot. I was so thin. But I could carry all this burden in my shoulder. And God gave me the grace. God gave me good friends who could support me. And uh, wow. Today, as we are speaking, I think I'm the broke one. <laughs> as we are speaking, I'm the broke one. 
God showed us mercy. We were tired. We decided that, oh, if prayers will bail us out, we will pray. I have seen prayers working for us. I've seen prayers working for me. And I feel so bad when I see marriages struggling, when I see mothers struggling. And all I know is you can just get angry and get tired and pray. For many of you who knows my story, the agenda of the devil was for me to be barren after I gave birth to Pearl. So the rest of my kids, my womb was to be removed and then my womb was bad and then I could not get pregnant and all that. But that rubbish was never even in my head. Me, I believed that. Me, I believed that I was a child of God and I was going to give birth. If God says that I was going to give birth, no amount of Satan was going to steal my womb from me. And God was going to use that broken womb to make sure that he gets glory out of it. That was my prayer. And God did it. And you think the devil was happy? That devil that didn't want me to get kids? And I will be very stupid to understand that that devil has left. I'll be very stupid to understand that that devil is just somewhere very happy and rejoicing and smiling. I will be a fool. It is a battle. If I want the devil in prayer, I have to maintain what God gave me with prayers. Pray. Get hungry. Come out and pray. Yes. You're in a family, you, you, you don't want to see anything in your family. Come out and pray. Usiombe, usi, u, u. Don't go maybe to church where people are going to pray and then you're going to collect some gossips there or you want to tell everyone your problems. No. Just have one confident. If you don't have any confident, turn back to your knees. Pray. Go somewhere. Intercede. And if you've never prayed in tongues, it will save you. Oh, God. If you know how to pray in tongues, don't even pray in the language that you understand. Just chant. Do whatever you have to do. Come out and pray. That is my message for you. It looks awkward. It sounds weird. But if you... I feel bad when I see women struggling in marriage. And yet we have the power. Do you know the power you carry as a woman? The devil doesn't want you to know that you have power. <laughs> you have power. You have power. When a marriage breaks, it is a woman who is tired. You are tired and you say, mm, I surrender. That is when you're using your own understanding. But when it is about you, you say, ah, this pain, ah, it is too much to hell with it. You will go. But when you come to a revelation to understand that it is not about you, it is about God. When those times come, because they will come. When those times come, you will understand that this is just a face. And I'm going to pass through it. And then I'm going to usher into another goodness. This is just a face. God give me the grace. May I carry your name so high. May your name be glorified in this marriage. Because anytime a marriage drops down, the enemy takes glory. Satan takes glory. And are you going to sit down and watch Satan taking glory? No. Involve God. Call God. Don't panic. Don't panic. When you see your marriage, when you see your children, when you see, don't panic. Use whatever you have. I know it is painful, but don't panic. Plead mercy. 
plead mercy. Just plead mercy over your children. If you see something that you don't want to see over your children, plead. Those are the, it, it, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You think these are, those are your kids. The moment I stopped calling my kids mine, <laughs> they stopped falling sick. Because, okay, if God gives you something, God wants you to work on that thing. God doesn't want you to just, nini. We are like, we are just the author, we are just the actors of someone else's script. God has given you children, you're just the helper. The purposes over these children, ni, the God. God knows why he has given you a child who is like this, like this, like this. There's a purpose behind it. There's something God wants to achieve with that your child. So this your child is not living your purpose. Is living the purpose of God. But if you nurture this child well, this child maybe will just come to appreciate you. But we live the purpose of God. So if you want to cling on this child that this is my child, God will just step back and watch you. But you have the understanding that this is not my child. I'm just helping God. Yes, I know it is my child. I've given birth to him. But I have an understanding that this is God's child. The purpose is completely different. I, I have to love this child and do everything because it is God who has gifted me with it. He's given me an opportunity to experience the motherhood thing or the fatherhood thing in it. I'm grateful, but it is not yours. It is just a gift you've been given to nature it, to enjoy the good times, the bad and everything. And by doing that, by helping God, God is able to help you have the blessings that come with the children. But when you have that an idea of whatever happens with the children and God and everything that God has given you, you will understand, you will know how to pray over those things. You've employed a house help. It's taking care of your children and everything. Yes, it is you who is providing so that it can be easy for her to take care of your children. Many a times even you're not there. You're working. You're from one place to another and someone else is taking care of your children. But who is providing? It is you. That is the exact thing that happens with God. We are just vessels. So when you have that understanding... You will know how to pray when you see things attacking your children. You will be like, God, why are you silent when the purpose, the destiny, whatever you created, I don't know the idea you came up with when you gave me this child. Do not be silent. I as a mother have done my part. God, please arise and save your purpose. And if it was the hand of the devil, God is going to arise and save you the purpose. Because it is not about you. It is not about your child. It is about the purpose of God. It is about the will of God. It is about who is taking glory. Not you. It is God. Not the devil. It is God. Not your child. It is God. Like it is about God. Many a times we pray, we sing, but we don't know. We don't know how we are going to handle these things. I've talked too much. I have so much to say. I've talked too much. I love talking. People who sit with me, people who are close to me knows that I love talking. I can talk anything and everything. So guys, thank you so much. If you've watched up to this point, God is looking for those people who are tired. I feel so bad to see people in marriage. Wakiwa wananyanyaswa. I feel so bad. When I know they have the power. When I know, yes, the earth can speak negative about them, maybe because of the things that they have done. But when I know that we have God who you can, who, 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 who can show you mercy, it is shame. It is bad. It is bad. Marriages are not supposed to suffer. It is bad. Just turn to God. Get tired. Humble yourself. You don't want to see that situation. God, I'm tired. 
I'm tired of kumeza madawa kila siku. I cannot, I cannot even now serve you well. Nimechoka. Remember, I forgot to tell you, when you go to a battlefield, whether it is physical or spiritual, let me give you an example. People went to, people went to Mandamano. Some of us, tulikuwa tunandamana, we're still going to our jobs, tunana, we are rejecting. Some of our heroes went, others did not come back. It is a battle. It is a battle. It is a battle. It is a battle. So even in prayer, tell God to protect you. And that is why unanga kuna watu wenye wanaingianga kwa maombi deep na unakuwa mokoma that that spirit of retaliation now comes back hard. Because Satan will not fold his hands like this and watch you want to reject reject sickness. You chineke chineke meo. You think Satan will fold his hands as you're chanting reject sickness. Reject heartbreak. Reject divorce. Reject G unmarriedness. Reject singlehoodness. Reject poverty. You think Satan will fold his hands as you're chanting to reject what he wants you to go through. Think again. So it is a battlefield. And if you are not strong enough, if you're not careful enough, if you've not ujajitolea, it is a sacrifice. And there's always spirit of retaliation. Sometimes you can go to pray. Me, I see it so many times. Maybe even when I'm speaking to you like this, I'll find some backlashes in my marriage. I'll find some backlash. If I talk about kids, I'll find some backlash in the kids. If I talk about marriage, I'll, some retaliation will come back to my marriage. And if you have the eyes to see, you will see and say, mm, I know what is happening. This will just pass. The devil is a liar. You go and save someone else's marriage. You talk to them. They come back together. You come back. Your own is waiting for you. Aha, the devil is there. Mm, you think you can chase me from here. I am here with you. Expect those things. I forgot to tell you. But have that eyes to see the spirit of retaliation. When you go to prayers, expect anything. The devil will not fold the hands and watch you reject confusion, reject poverty. The devil will not watch you do that. But persistence and being strong will make Shetani at the end of it. Now God will take glory and the Kina Mikhail, those people who fought, will come and fight for you. You will not even be the one to fight. Now they will come. You are just there fighting, but there are some people God have appointed. They sent the angels that are there to fight for you. I feel bad. Honestly, deep down my heart, I feel bad when I see people struggling in marriages. I feel bad. I feel bad when I see mothers going through shit. The other time I was in Mama Lucy and I could see mothers with sick kids. And I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, God, show them mercy. Show them mercy. I would really love to know, to see that this information has just made someone to just come out and pray and they have saved their siblings, their families, their children, this nation. And if you are an intercessor out there, if Kenya goes down, you will not go to work. No one will go to work. If right now Kenya is on fire and people are fighting left, right and center, you will not go to work. You will not even do that your business. The other time we saw floods in Kenya, 
we saw floods and even those people who had good homes, the bungalows, you could not even stay in your home. Those people who had big cars and everything, you could not even drive. Which road? Where are you going to drive? Have you ever seen a, a vehicle driving in, 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 in an ocean or in a lake or something like in what? Is it on water? Sorry. Forgive my English. Have you ever seen? We are living in a world where anything can happen. So if you fold your hands and you don't want to pray for this nation, at you, me, I'm okay. If you did not learn from floods, if you have not learned from these mandamanos that have happened, people have closed their businesses and their home relaxing and then it affects them. Maybe when I when I be and all that and things like that, you gender kazi that day you are not going to get money, you have loans to pay. I'm telling you, if pray for this nation. People should be angry. Come out. Look for that one friend. Look for that one friend who is an intercessor, who you can call in the middle of the night and say, Abba, I have dreamt like this mama. Help, I mean, shit, I cannot even open my mouth. Please intercede for me. This nation, hey, if Kenya goes down, we will go down. If your sister's marriage goes down, imagine you will go down. If one of your siblings, Hajapata Kazi, goes down, imagine the rest of you all. They, this one sibling will drain you. Can we just have... Usikalie tu maneno, nothing is normal, nothing is normal, like life is spiritual, just have that in mind that life is spiritual, nothing is normal, don't take things, don't normalize things, don't normalize things, you see something happening to you, you just want to normalize, oh it is just headache, please, I've talked much, I know. But I want this information to just help someone. Please. Please. Pray. Pray for this nation. You don't have a prayer point. Pray for this. If Kenya burns right now, if Kenya is in shit right now, utenda kukula pizza wapi? Okay, utakula yo pizza wapi? I know there are those people who can go out. Life is like music. Everyone have their role. Not everyone will go out to Andamana. Some people will stay back, pray for the nation. Some people will, will stay back, maybe, maybe fund those people who are going. Some people will stay back. Like, it is a role that not everyone should go on the street. Some people will just sit back. And that is the same thing that always happen, even in these families. You can have a, a husband who does not pray. But when you go to pray, her complain. That is someone who is supporting you. Her complain. Some people will have husbands when you, maybe you want to go maybe somewhere that these people will go maybe to pray. Maybe they want to go somewhere. They, maybe the sisters or anyone can just find them. They are part of the story. Not everyone will go. There are some people who will stay back. There are some people who will, maybe when you're going, there are some people who will stay to take care of some other things. Like it is, can we stop judging people? Life is like music. There are high tones, there are low tones. And all of them have to be there to make everything beautiful. Everyone has to play their part. Not everyone is a giver. Not everyone is a prayer person. Not everyone is, not everyone, like, like not everyone is everything. Just accept God gave people different personality because God saw that this life is like a music and God understood there are those people who have high keys, there are those people who have low keys, there are those people who have tenor, there are those people. And when all these things come together, they just sink in. Please. 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 Can we pray? If you see that when you go to church, you'll not pray well. 
lock yourself in your room if you in your room you'll not pray with just go somewhere when you're walking just take a walk take an evening walk pray you see 6 6 p.m ah pray 6 p.m 6 12 pray 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 those times where the 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 angels you know I don't want to talk some things. People will think that I'm a spiritual person. That is why I normally fear talking about some things. <laughs> Don't start confusing me. There are times if you pray, there are angels who always ascend during some times. Those are the times you have to pray. Like 6, 6 p.m. This time there is always an exchange of light and darkness. That is where some funny funny things always happen because there's that force of some exchange just pray god will fight for you god is looking for people who can pray you think even kenya we can survive without prayer pray for the intercede for anything and everything and above all if you're an intercessor intercede for kenya i know you have a good life i know you have a healthy children i know you have good marriage i know you're rich your siblings like everything in your family is okay and you're seated you are not praying for kenya okay how are you going to enjoy life which holiday are you going to go which roads are you going to use if all the roads are being closed there is fire on the mountain in this nation airports being closed you will miss an appointment a very important international appointment the other time the airport was closed so let me tell you the airport is closed you have a flight ticket of that particular time how will you enter and you're just a mere ordinary person pray for this nation if you do not pray for this nation i don't know where you're going to enjoy life from it will reach a time where you cannot even get out of this nation if you don't pray for this nation Yes, I know most of the time we can joke, we can do everything, but eh, can you just put on your seriousness about things? Yes. I didn't say you become a spiritual person. No, I did not say that. But I want you to get angry of whatever you're going through. And God will listen. God will hear. And the devil will fight. There will be retaliations, but when you persistence will make the devil step back i see persistence. i have a brother guys this video is gonna be long i have a brother of mine my brother who i'm going even right now i want to go see my brother say i want to make this video go see my brother the baby was discharged my brother is persistent she can call you today, she can call you tomorrow. You're not picking, you're not picking, you're not picking, you're not picking, you're not picking because now you're fed up with him. I'm telling you, he will not be tired. Believe me, you. He will call, he will call, he will call, he will call today, tomorrow. You don't pick to the other day, the other day will persist until you will pick. And you know, my brother always make me learn that knock, knock. Knock, 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 knock. Keep on knocking until the door opens. Keep on knocking. It is the intention. Keep on knocking. If this person understands that this is the only person who can rescue me, I know, I know, nimekuchokesha, najua nimekuchokesha, but I don't have any other person to turn to. It is only you. Imagine you telling God that. At a God, I know I don't have any other person to turn to. I don't have any other person to turn to. God, I know it is only you. And you keep knocking. Believe me, you one day the door will open. God will be tired. And you'll be like, ah, open for her. Go. Oh. She's too much. She really wants it. Give it to her. Thank you so much, guys. We've come to an end of this video. Thank you so much. If I've quasered you, if I've talked anything that didn't please your ears, I'm really sorry. I'll be very glad if you take one or two things. It can help you. I know this is not my Kawaida video. Yeah, this is not my Kawaida video, but it is what it is. We speak what the Spirit of God says. We speak what sometimes what the physical say. Yeah, so thank you so much guys. If you've watched up to this point, bye guys, guys. I made my nails. <laughs> so it's make a one week. Yeah, but with the help of our house help, I don't do much. Yeah, I don't do much so guys thank you so much and bye guys